Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'll be showing you guys a tier list for every single role in the game. So my opinion has actually changed on quite a lot of champions. The first one would be Set and then there's many many more and I'll explain to you guys why because some champions are much much better than I initially thought and some are weaker than I initially thought. So we've had some balance changes and everything like that. You know, your runes changed, items changed, champions changed, blah blah blah. This tier list is going to update you on what is good and what is not good. So, uh, there's timestamps in the description if you just want to skip around to the list. So, let's get into it. So, I just quickly want to give an update. The, I told you guys in the last tier list, if that one would get 2,000 likes, I would make a Soraka video. Soraka video is going to be uploaded in a few days. So, for your Soraka mains out there, there's going to be a Soraka video very soon. For this list, I want to do a new challenge before getting into it. And I'm going to make this quite easy. If this tier list video gets 2,000 likes... I'm going to be releasing a Z video in like one or two days. Let, let's say two days, all right? If this video gets 2,000 likes, I'm going to spam Z and give you guys a Z video. So now let's get into it. So we're talking about the Baron lane right here. And uh, there is this star on Garen, as you can see. Like there is a star on him. And this indicates that he's truly the best, right? Like I really love how this website, uh, madlabs.gg, has this star where you can basically say, all right, Garen is not just S plus tier. He's basically S plus plus tier. And the reason that I have it is because he's so incredibly easy to play. He doesn't really have counters. Like sure, sure, Vayne counters him, right? Like sure. But besides that, he is so incredibly tanky and becomes so unkillable in the late game. It's just crazy. And his early game is like, he's not even weak in the early game. That's the beauty of Garen. He's actually strong in the early game too. Like he's just overall an insanely broken champion. I cannot imagine how broken Garen is in low elo because he's already really strong in high elo. So I just cannot imagine what happens in low elo. Fiora, you know, the usual very high skilled champion, but insanely broken if you get good at her. She's the type of champion who kind of deserves to be in the S plus tier, if you know what I'm trying to say, because she's not an easy champion, right? Like if you compare her to Garen, Fiora is really hard to play. Like she's not broken in if, if your hands are not good for her, right? She really needs the right hands to be played because she's really hard to play. But if you are good at her, S plus tier. Darius, basically always a good pick. I mean, sure, there is some counters to Darius. Sure, he can get annoyed by a lot of CC. But besides, like he's one of those Baron laners that can like completely hard carry a game. Like if your team is trash, he is one of those champion champions that can seriously, like genuinely one versus nine the game. That is what truly makes him S plus tier. And he does fine in any lane matchup as well. And now let's talk about Set because I thought Set was gonna be weak. Set got a massive nerf in recent patches, massive. So I like my initial thought, and also like after a few days, I really thought that Set was like only A tier. But like after playing more, he's still S plus tier. I th I honestly don't understand why, but he's so powerful regardless of the nerfs. Like I cannot imagine how broken he was before the nerfs. Then he's still S plus tier. Pretty much always works, and just he wins he wins lane so easily. Like it's so easy to win lane when you're playing set. His diving potential is so powerful. His CC, his anti burst, everything. He just has it all. Renekton is always a good pick. The problem with Renekton is he kind of falls off in the late game. Sure, he's very strong in the early game, but as I said, like he's not the best tank to have in the late game and he doesn't deal that much damage in the late game and team fights as well just you know very solid champion like very very strong just not quite s plus tier gragas s tier and they buffed this early game you know they buffed this attack damage so he can match up against an, uh, other baron laners much more easily than before and like full ap gragas especially th that's what i'm talking about like if we're talking about tank gragas i would probably put him on top of the a tier but we're talking about full ap gragas here then I would put him in the S tier. Like, so powerful. It's crazy. Crazy how strong it is. And I am a lover of full AP Gragas. Because it's just like, he's also one of those champions that can 1 versus 9. He's It's the same as Darius. Although not quite as much. Because, like, you have one big burst combo. Then you need to wait a few seconds. Then you can do it again. But this big burst combo one-shots enemies. That's the beauty of it absolute one shot like after three items already you can one shot and with four and five items you can pretty much one shot with only two abilities of yours that's the thing about full ap gragas if you reach two three items you've already entered his his uh, moment of the game where he's unbeatable before that he is a little weak 
but you can get through it pretty easily. He's a very safe champion. With his first ability, you can just win your, like, not, not even win your lane. You can just get through your lane very easily and get through the late game. Jay's still quite solid. I don't really have too much to say about him. He's just a solid champion. Camille, even though she got nerfed, still S tier. Just her first ability is just way too strong. And they even nerfed her ultimate, but still S tier. True, it's true that she's now on the bottom of the S tier, but she's still good. I made a Camille video very recently, actually. Just look up Hell's Devil Camille and watch it. And in that video, I really fully explain how to play Camille, because there is certain things that you have to do. It's it's this is basically like Fiora, a very hard champion to play. But if played correctly, one of the most rewarding champions in the game. After that, we have Riven, and Riven is Riven, right? Riven is just good. She's good. Good enough to be on the bottom of the S tier, but not good enough to be any higher. Like, she, honestly, she barely made the S tier. I nearly put her in the A tier, but still S tier because of her mobility. Like, if you get ahead with her, she becomes so powerful. And in the right hands, like, this is also one of those champions. If you can play her well, she can absolutely hard carry games. And now I also want to talk about a few other champions. I'm not going to talk about every champion, but just about a few. First one is going to be Singed. Insanely underrated champion. I'm going to make a Singed video, like, probably this week as well to show you guys. I have already made a lot of Singed videos. And if you haven't watched those, like, in my opinion, those are one of the best videos on my channel, the Singed videos. Because Singed is such a unique champion. And he can hard carry. That's the beauty of Singe. He can hard carry, but you have to play him in a certain way. And uh, like, I almost never see good Singe players. Oh, I would say, like, if I'm being honest, around 25% of the Singe players that I see in my games are good. And then 75% is a total noob on Singed. So even if you don't play Singed, if you just want to have some fun watching Wild Rift, I really recommend you to watch my Singe videos. Just look up Hell's Devil Singed. You can pretty much watch any champion on my channel, except Aurelian Soul. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Aurelian Soul mains are crying. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But enough about Aurelian Soul. Just look up Hell's Devil and then the champion name and you'll see all of my videos on certain champions. So um, the next champion that I want to talk about is Nasus. And I've honestly downgraded Nasus a little bit. Even though I am a, re like a really big Nasus lover myself. The you know what the problem is with Nasus? First of all, draft. Like, you're never going to get a good draft with Nasus. Like, only 5 or 10% of the drafts work with Nasus. I'm not going to explain what, what these drafts are. I have like 20,000 Nasus videos on my YouTube channel. So if you want to watch it, you can watch that. And the other problem is, no one seems to understand how to play with a Nasus in your team. Like, let's say you are a good Nasus, right? Like, let's say you've watched all of my videos because I'm like, Nasus is one of my best champions and you know exactly how to play Nasus and how to exactly win the game. Your teammates are going to flame you because they don't understand it because the play style of Nasus is you just split push all early game and then in the mid late game, that's when you help your team. So you're going to get flamed so hard by your team. Same goes for kill. And see, the problem of kill is even if you reach the late game, she's still useless. I'm not quite, like, not quite sure why they nerfed kill so incredibly hard that, that it just makes her unplayable, really. She's, she's, liter she's literally unplayable as a carry. Like, I'm not even kidding. She's utterly unplayable. Even Teemo is stronger than kill. It's kind of sad, but it is what it is. Next champion is going to be cannon. And uh, B tier, like, I've put, I've put cannon in the B tier. But the thing about cannon is he's kind of a coin flip champion, right? Like, if you get ahead... You can one-shot enemies with your ultimate. But if you don't get ahead, you are so useless. Because you're just going to get one-shot after you engage. It's just, like, he's such a coin flip champion right now. And you really need to play him to his powers. Like, you have to rotate to the first dragon. Because if you don't, you've already missed one of your major power spikes. You just basically have to team fight. He's so weak in one versus ones. Not that good at ganking. But he's really good at team fighting. So he just is. He's a very one dimensional champion. And he's not that good at team fighting up until the late game. That's the thing about him. So he's a good champion. Don't get me wrong. B tier, but still a good champion. Very solid. Um, all right, let's move on to the jungle. So here I've actually not given anyone a star. And the reason is I don't feel that there is any utterly broken jungler in the game. So I have put Kazix and Lee Sin in the S. Plus. The reason is like. Kha'Zix is just so strong in the early game. Um, he only struggles a little bit in the mid game. But once you get ahead in the late game as well, like you one shot the squishies. That's the thing about him. Sure, Kha'Zix has some weaknesses, but his powers completely compensate for it. And if you play him correctly, if you can play around that isolation passive, it's just crazy strong. Yet again, I have a million Kha'Zix videos. I'm not going to fully explain why. Um, you can check it out. So, Lee Sin, 
is a pretty hard champion to play, but not that hard. Like, you know, Lee Sin is one of those champions that you may be scared to get into, right? Like, you may be thinking, I really want to play Lee Sin, but he is so hard to play. There's going to be so much pressure on me getting kills in the early game. Let me tell you right now, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Because I had this as well. Like, I hadn't made a Lee Sin video, like... I think even a year after Wild Rift got released, because I was always thinking by myself, like, I can never pull this off, because it's Lee Sin, such, you know, everyone talks so highly about him being such a hard champion, no, it's not that hard, it's actually fine, like, you only, you may need a few games to understand his combos, but you just have to go for it. That's the thing with Lee Sin. You have to go for the kills. He's one of those champions where you have to limit test yourself. And yet again, I have a Lee Sin video on my channel, but he's one of those champions that you really have to limit test and fully understand how far you can go. And if you understand those things, which shouldn't take you many games, as long as you play hyper aggressive every game, just to understand the limits, you can get, like, you'll understand him. An S plus tier champion. Lee Sin is like the best ganker in the game by far level level two even level one he can already get kills at ganks so that's what makes him an s plus tier champion you can get any teammate ahead in your lane very easily now in the s tier on top we actually have a champion that's not even supposed to be a jungler which is fiora unbelievably fiora is like nearly an s plus tier jungler sure she's not the best ganker but she's still quite good at ganking like she doesn't have big cc but she has enough CC to make her viable regardless. And she has so much damage during ganks that she can still pull it off. Also, one versus ones in jungles, she wins. Like, she wins against pretty much any champion. Maybe not against the Kha'Zix, but she can even win against the Lee Sin. She can even win against the Pantheon. These are some incredible early game champions, but Fiora can win against them. So, so she can really hold her ground in, in jungle very easily. And in the late game, it becomes even bigger. She can split push as well. Just do whatever she wants. Evelyn, reason that Evelyn is on top of the S tier, not because she's utterly broken, just because she's so easy to play. And if you get to the late game, it's game over. <coughs> So, as I said, Evelyn is not really broken, but it's just, like, there is no, no real counter to Evelyn, right? Like, there's no way that you can reveal an Evelyn, unless, of course, you have the champions to do so, like Ash with a third ability, like uh, Fizz with his ultimate, like uh, Twisted Fate with his ultimate, right? Like, there is some champions that give you vision, but the majority doesn't have that. And that is why Evelyn really excels in this meta. Also, also, vision doesn't work against her. Wards don't reveal her when she's invisible. So, and Evelyn is one of those champions as well. When you reach the late game, it's game over. Of course, reaching that late game is not as easy. And that is why I've put her in the S tier. They have nerfed her and now she's in a good spot. It's just her late game is a bit too much. Camille Jungle, yet again, like, the nerfs don't really affect Camille Jungle, the, the nurse on her second ability, because Camille Jungle doesn't really use the second ability too much. She's just still very good, she's so damn powerful in the jungle, but yet again, super hard to play, but if you pull it off, really strong. Olaf in the jungle, you know, incredible champion, works against so many different picks, like, especially good against tanks, right? Like, if you pick it against an Alistar, against a Rammus, Malphite, whatever, you can shred through their armor, you can shred through their tankiness, because you do true damage. Also, if you pick him into big CC, like Morgana, Lux, whatever, you can shred through those champions as well the only thing olaf struggles against is big damage champions right like vagar uh oriana zix uh, uh, uh draven reason that he struggles against those is because when he uses his ultimate sure he becomes unstoppable but he loses his passive armor and magic resist so he becomes very squishy so be careful with olaf jungle you're not unkillable you're just unstunnable unstoppable i should say right so keep in mind with olaf you have to pick him into the right draft Gragas jungle yet again i'm talking about full ap gragas not the tanky gragas that we know sure tank gragas is good but if we're talking about tank gragas i would probably put him on the bottom of the s tier but full AP Gragas in the middle of the S tier. Really, really good. Same story as Baron Lane. Wukong, incredibly good. One of the best tanks in the game, especially combined with a Yasuo. By the way, really, really solid jungler. Now let's talk a little bit about Jax, because jungle Jax is just not that strong anymore, guys. It's like, it's not. They nerfed him, and then they nerfed him, and then they nerfed him, and nerfed him. He was still okay, and he was still okay, he was still okay. But now they've nerfed his attack speed so far, that like your jungle clear, uh, like you, you clear it so much slower than before. 
which means that he's not gonna get as much gold as before anymore you cannot accelerate your lead as much as you used to be like do you guys remember when there would be like a jax in your game that's like 5,000 gold ahead by 10 minutes that doesn't happen anymore now reason is because you cannot farm as fast anymore so you cannot steal enemy jungles as fast anymore you cannot take dragons as fast anymore you cannot take turrets as fast anymore like he, he has taken a hit it takes him multiple seconds longer to take objectives now and that's basically what hit him because that was one of his major powers next up we have pantheon and although i really hate pantheon and let me tell you what like i love pantheon and i hate pantheon and there is a big reason for that by the way, I'm also doing a skin giveaway, I nearly forgot to say, giving away 8 legendary skins this month, all you have to do is put down a comment under this video, whatever you want, right? But I was talking about Pantheon, and I will be bringing out a Pantheon video soon as well to show you why I really hate Pantheon. Pantheon is good, he's super good, but he requires good teammates as well, because the thing with Pantheon is, you're so powerful in the early game, you can just absolutely demolish the enemy, but you're useless in the late game. That's the problem. You're like utterly useless in the late game. So even if you get your team super ahead, even if you're able to secure like all three dragons, even if you've gotten so many turrets, you become useless in the late game. And if your team doesn't carry you, you lose the game. That is why I've put him in the bottom of the S3 because Pantheon is so strong. Like he's so powerful. He's really, really, really good. But it's just his hero design or his champion kit. It doesn't work. Like it doesn't work if your teammates are not good. Now we talk about Rengar, and Rengar is basically a weaker Evelyn, like really really solid champion, same story as Evelyn, but he's just a bit weaker, because he's not always invisible, he only has one ultimate to make him invisible, and to one shot an enemy, Evelyn can basically always do that, but still Rengar is quite solid. Xin Zhao, you know, very good, very good with his ultimate as well in the late game, and he, but he's especially good in the early game, like he's one of those champions to shut down enemy early game champions like Lee Sin and Kha'Zix, right, he can... He can fight them basically, he can fight them in one versus ones. Really, really solid champion. Also good at ganking, good at taking enemy jungles, etc, etc. Vi is one of those champions that's not that strong, but her single target damage is really good. And when you get ahead on Vi, especially in the late game, she will absolutely hard carry the game. She deals so much damage and she becomes like nearly unkillable because her second ability is going to give her a lot of shielding as well. And that beautiful ultimate of hers allows you to just cancel out any ability you want. Like for for example, Vi absolutely hard counters champions like Katarina, right? Katarina, when she's using her ultimate, Vi can just boom ult her and completely cancel out that ultimate. So, champions like that, Vi works really well against. Jace in the jungle, you know, really good. Nothing too special, just really good. Other champions that I want to talk about would be uh, the Ramus. I feel like Ramus is quite underrated, even though Ramus got nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. He's really good in certain compositions, right? Like, if you're playing champions that just heavily rely on basic attacks, like Jinx, I don't know, like uh, Kai'Sa, like, just, just basic attack champions, like Graves, like Darius. Uh, no, well, actually, Darius does pretty well to Ramis, but you know what I mean. Basic attack champions, Ramis works really well against that because he's able to tank up the damage so hard. The only problem with Ramis is, though, he sucks against true damage like the Darius, as I said, I'm sorry, and the Garen, and the Vayne, and the Olaf, and he sucks against magic damage, right? Like, if you're up against the Orianna or Zix or something like that, you will get destroyed. So, he just has too many weaknesses, but if, if picked into the right draft, Ramus is super powerful. Next up, I want to talk about Shivana, and even though I don't have any Shivana videos on my channel, I feel Shivana is a bit underrated as well. So, I've put her up from the C tier to the B tier, because I feel there is potential with her, because, like, <clears throat> if you get some dragons with her, like if you get one or two dragons, that's where she becomes really strong in the late game. But before that, she's so weak. She really, really requires those dragons. She really needs those buffs that you get when taking dragons to become strong. So if you lose in the early game with Shivana, you're going to struggle really hard in the late game to make a comeback because she needs those dragons, guys. And then next up, you know, Master Yi. <laughs> I hate Master Yi so much, and he's honestly balanced right now. I feel like he's still a bit strong in lower elo, but in high elo, he's okay, right? Like, you can counter him with CC. Um, if picked into the right draft, Master Yi is actually incredibly powerful, because if, if he doesn't get CC'd, and he can just go ham on the enemy, he's really, really strong. So now onto the mid lane. Um, here, you can see two champions with the star. One of them is Orianna and one of them is Zed. So I told you guys already, if this video reaches 2,000 likes, I'm going to be bringing out a Zed video in a few days. Like, I'll be working on it and I'll give you guys that video in a few days. The Soraka video is going to be coming as well, so don't worry, I remembered that. But now let's talk about Orianna. 
don't have too much to say about her she's just broken like Oriana doesn't have any counters if I could like she probably only has one real champion that counters her a little bit which would be the Diana because Diana can trade with Oriana. Uh, Diana can use her first ability to trade and she can full engage on Oriana. And Oriana cannot really follow up with her balls because she's not as fast as Diana. But besides that, no one counters Oriana. And Oriana is one of those champions. You can play her safely in the early game. Sure, you may not be as good at ga ganking lanes. But if you reach the late game, you're going to hard carry. Like no one is going to kill you. You're just going to absolutely hard carry and no one can stop you. Now let's talk about Zed. Zed, um, he's totally different from Oriana. You can gank so hard in the early game with him. Like once you reach level five, you can get you can get so many ganks and assassinating kills with his ultimate. And he's just so good if you have the right playstyle with him. But he's also really hard because it's really hard to do the proper combos with him because he obviously has like a million different combos to do with his shadows. But if you are familiar with his with his abilities. He's really good, like really, really, really good in the current meta, especially, right? Especially because Yuma's Ghost Blade got buffed as well, which is a core item on Zed. He gets even more armor penetration early on in the game, so he deals even more damage. Just a very, very solid champion and pretty much broken in the mid lane. Next time I want to talk about Zix and I underrated Zix. Like I've always put Zix in the S tier or even the S plus tier. But recently, in one of my recent tier lists, I had put him in the A tier. And I regret that because I've been playing some Ziggs and my god, that champion is just, is way too strong. He deals way too much damage. He can take turrets super fast. He skills so hard into the late game. You can play your lane safely. He has very good anti-ganking, his second ability. He has it all. He really has it all. That's the beauty of Ziggs. He truly has it all and on top of the S tier. Next up, we have Irelia. Sorry. <sighs> Next up, we have Irelia, and Irelia is one of those one-trick champions. I don't play Irelia. Maybe I should give her a try. I don't know. Like, I, I still owe you guys, or you owe me. I don't know how you say it, but I still have to make an Irelia video for you guys because when I made an Irelia guide like one year ago, I said in that guide, if the video reaches 3,000 likes, I'll make a full Irelia gameplay video. That video nearly has like 5,000 likes. So you guys still need to get an Irelia video for me. I just... Ah. I need to get the push to start to learn her because honestly this is the same story as Lee Sin. I'm kind of afraid to get into her because it will cost me so much time. <laughs> you guys don't know like you guys don't see behind the scenes right all you guys are seeing is just me being good at every champion but if only you knew how much work some of these champions take like Fiora like Akali like Camille like what other champion took me very long uh uh Zed actually oh my god like Katarina as well these champions take so long to get good at it's of course worth it but I don't know like I, I may I may give Irelia a try and see if I like her we'll see we'll see Twisted Fate always good his CC in the late game incredible the best ganker in the game as well the thing that he lacks is sustain damage so when you pick Twisted Fate make sure you have some sustain damage in your team because Enemies can just get Mercury threats and completely avoid your stuns and you're going to be useless. So keep that in mind to Twisted Fate. But besides, he's incredibly powerful. Katarina, same story as Aurelia. One trick champion. She's not actually this good. Like the actual power of Katarina would probably be bottom A tier. But I still put her in the S tier because Katarina one tricks are so good at that champion that it makes her S tier. And no one really plays Katarina except for Katarina one tricks. Galio S tier in the right draft. Pick him against Assassins. Mage Assassins, sorry, and he's S tier. Like against a Fizz, against Katarina, against Akali. You can just block out all of their damage with your second ability when you play Galio because it reduces a lot of magic damage. Jace, S tier in the mid lane. Just a solid S tier. Not too much, not too little, just a good champion. After that, we have Akshan, Brand, Ari, Corky. These are all just solid champions, right? And Vagar is one of the most underrated champions. The thing about Vagar is, I feel like people don't know when to pick him because. There is one thing about Vagar that makes him broken, as in, like, if you pick him against certain champions. And I'm sure, like, I'm sure only 5% of the viewers that are watching this video are gonna know this, but I'm gonna reveal it right now. Just like, this is like a quick little test of your knowledge. Don't have to put it in the comments, but I'm gonna tell you. Vagar is incredibly broken against champions that like to dive. And what I'm trying to say is against Master Yi, against Zed, against Kat uh, no not Katarina sorry against um, uh, Akali as well against uh, Camille you know champions like that that like to dive you head on 
you counter that as a Vagar. So if you pick him into those champions, in the late game, he one-shots them because of his ultimate. Basically, no one can dive you unless they one-shot you. And you're not going to get one-shot because you have your third ability, which is the cage, right? So that's the beauty of Vagar. If you pick him into the right draft, really powerful. I love how Kill is chilling under my... Uh, under my banner right here. That's how bad kill is. We cannot even see her on the tier list. She's so, so low. So let's just hide kill right here and not talk too much about her. Yeah, you know what? Let's just, let's just hide her. No one really cares about kill anymore because she's so damn bad. Aurelian Soul sitting at a solid B tier. You know, I've tried Aurelian Soul, went 0 7 nearly every single game. I know that there's some good Aurelian Soul players, but I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see the power of this champion. Sure, he's incredibly good in the late game, but. Getting to that late game is so damn hard and I just haven't figured out the champion yet. So maybe soon I will. Next up we have the dragon lane and right here yet again Oriana with the star. This is the second tier list where she has the star. And even though this is the dragon lane, you know, it's supposed to be ADCs, which is attack damage carries, which it mostly is, but Oriana is still sitting on top of all of them. And that's because she is broken in the dragon lane. You know, she 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 pretty much does well in every lane. You can get to the late game and we all know what happens when you get to the late game with Oriana. She outskills everyone. After that, we have Varus. And Varus, I'm talking about AD Varus, not AP Varus, by the way. AP Varus is not that strong. AD Varus is so damn powerful, right? Like, you get lethality items on him. You have so much poke damage. His ultimate is really good. You have execution uh, ability with your second ability. You have anti-healing with your third ability and a slow with your third ability. Just, he really has it all. And especially when you reach the late game, if you're able to utilize the passive of his second ability to constantly shoot out your first ability, only Varus mains will know what I'm talking about here. Because, you know, uh, if you apply blighted stacks on the enemy and then shoot your first ability, you will reduce the cooldown by 4 seconds basically instant cooldown reduction in the late game so varus is good in the early game good in the mid game and good in the late game lucian is one of the most slippery champions and you know what he's like super broken except for one thing which is his range you have to get dangerously close to the enemy with lucian to really do something but if you can and if you maneuver correctly he's so damn broken vain <coughs> Does Vayne need an introduction? You know what? She doesn't. I'm not even going to talk about Vayne. After that, we get Draven. So Draven with his buff on his ultimate actually makes him more powerful. He was already pretty good, but now he's even stronger. And his one-shotting potential got increased with that ultimate. Also, his team fight damage got increased because 30%, I think, I believe they buffed it by like 30% attack damage ratio on his ultimate. And the beauty is Draven nearly only built raw attack damage items except for the solaris charge blade that's what makes it even better because his raw attack damage is going to scale super hard with that ultimate so it do so much damage now after that we got kaisa kaisa is basically always a good pick her ultimate is so powerful as well and you can get away with running exhaust on kaisa um just like she has it all as well she has it all only her range is not that big but her third ability makes her invisible so you can juke away enemies her ultimate allows her to reposition herself and give her a barrier just she has it all guys zix same story as oriana but he's not as good as oriana Ezreal, you know, he's really good, but you have to get to the late game. And if you're up against a good opponent, you will get punished in the early game. So, yeah, that's that's basically the only problem of him. Like, sure, when you get to the late game, you're going to absolutely dominate. But getting to that late game is the hard part. Corky, solid dragon laner. And especially solid because of his package. Because his package, you know, allows him to basically win the dragon fight for free. After that, we have Ash, which is, in my opinion as well, one of the most underrated champions in the game. I've made multiple Ash videos on my channel showcasing how strong she is. And like, if you don't get it yet, you have to watch those videos because Ash is strong. She's really strong. After that, we have Zaya, Caitlyn, Jinx. These are all solid champions. Not that good, just solid. Misfortune, you know, Misfortune's hype has died off a little bit because people really learned how to counter Misfortune. They've understood, like, sure, we can pick champions that counter her ultimate that can just cancel it, or we can just dodge her ultimate. Like, people understand. People are not going to give you free hits on your first ability like they used to. Um, just people understand Misfortune. Now. She's not, you cannot abuse her anymore. I want to talk about this bad boy over here, which is Jin. Even though my Jin is super good, even though I have like a 60% win rate on Jin, he sucks. He sucks so hard. Like, he's just so weak. It's so sad to say. It's the reality, I know, guys. What can I do? What can I do? He's just... 
<laughs> oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Like, can they just buff him? I want to play Jin every game. Like, honestly, if they buff him, probably not going to be uploading any uh, videos except for Jin videos. <laughs> you guys are going to be seeing like two Jin videos every week, I swear, because I'm already spamming him. Imagine if he gets buffed. <laughs> All right. On to the support tier list. So, right here, I actually have a few supports with a star. First of all, is Nami. Always a good pick. So, look, you do, okay, whatever. Nami has it all, right? She has it all. She has the CC, she has the damage, she has the healing, she has the buffs, she has everything. After that, we have Thresh. Um, Thresh is also one of those champions that's a bit hard to play, but if played well, insanely broken. Like, if you're able to hit your hook shots, if you're able to hit some good third abilities, ultimates, etc., etc., Thresh is incredibly powerful. And Thresh also skills into the late game because he gets a lot of ability power and armor from the souls. So, he's really good in the early game and he becomes very tanky in the late game as well. Lulu, she, like, the reason that I haven't given her a star is sure she's broken but she requires good teammates because you're buffing your teammates so that's basically the only reason that i've not given her that star like thresh and nami for example they can do a lot on their own but lulu cannot lulu requires good teammates but if she has good teammates she enhances that by like a million times same story with yumi but um, I've given Yumi a star because I feel she's broken if you play duo Q and I feel like you shouldn't really pick Yumi unless you're playing duo Q because yeah that, that's the whole point with Yumi you attach to an ally and fully rely on that ally to carry the game so if you play her in solo queue she won't have the star but in duo queue definitely like if you play with a good player and I will release a video playing Jin with Yumi you guys will see how powerful that is by the way and like Yumi is really strong. If the player you're attached to plays well and gets buffed by Yumi, it's so damn powerful. Rakan, you know, one of the best supports in the game as well. N I nearly put him in the S plus tier, but I just really felt like Nami, Thresh, and Lulu are a bit better. Well, now that I'm thinking about it though, like he kind of deserves to be in the S plus tier. Like, yeah, yeah, he does. Like he's so powerful. He definitely does. Mm -hmm. Rakan with his second ability, his ultimate, third ability, shielding, just everything, really. So damn powerful. Braum, Janna, insanely good. Leona and Alistar, insanely good engaging champions as well. If you need an engaging uh, support, you go for Alistar or Leona. Soraka, you know, very underrated champion. Yet again, I'm going to be making a full Soraka guide very, very soon. It's going to be in my, on my YouTube channel in like a few days. So keep your eyes out on that. Morgana, Lux, basically the same story. I don't really like it a lot. It's more of a carry support than an actual support. Seraphin only works in certain compositions. Like she's really good against low range champions and melee champions. But besides, she's not that good. Senna support kind of sucks now. They've nerfed her really hard by nerfing the range of her passive. She still works, but she's just not that strong anymore. So that was it for the tier list. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah. I will see you all in the next Waldrift video. Bye-bye.